so I've never really had cute school supplies. I tried having the cute back to school thing back in middle school, but it was never very successful. I'm really into like cottage core, goblin core, hobbit core, all the cores. I love it. But finding cute aesthetic school supply things, pencil cases, backpacks, lunch boxes, is so hard. Why do they make it so hard? And so it's my last year of high school. It's my last chance at back to school, at least for high school. And I wanted to finally do it successfully. I want to make my dream lunch kit with matching pencil case. So the idea I had was a quilted lunchbox because I love quilted. Quilted things are just so good. I love them. And I have done a couple quilted projects before. So I'm not, I'm not inexperienced. So then I began planning what I wanted it to look like. And then I had to figure out the dimensions and the measurements for the squares. Took a lot of brain power and math. I settled on nine five by five inch squares for the base of the lunch bag. So not including the, the flap. So the dimensions are 12 and a half by 10 by five inches. The dimensions for the pencil case, I completely changed later. So just ignore those. So then I cut out a little guide, a little pattern piece for the square, um, and remembered to add half a centimeter or quarter inch seam allowance. I just cut a bunch of squares out and then we start sewing them together. I arranged the squares how I wanted them to be arranged <laughs> and then first sewed them in rows of three and then sewed those rows together. Once I had the two three by three squares, sewed those together, making sure to line up all the seams, and then ironed them flat. Then I cut out my padding, and for the lining, I wanted it to be waterproof. So what I did is I got a waterproof tablecloth from my local dollar store, and it worked very well, so I recommend. So 
I wanted my lunch kit to be a little puffier because that's fun. I just added a little layer of stuffing on top of the batting and then the quilted fabric on top. And then I just sewed diagonal lines across each of the squares, creating little X's on the squares. And it turned out quite well. After all the stitching lines are done with both the lining and the quilt folded in half and sew on either side to make a sort of pouch. I just did the top stitch press the seams down and make everything look nice and clean. I also quilted a little six square section and cut out some batting for that as well. And that is gonna be the little, little flap that goes over the top of the lunch kit. <laughs> so after you've sewn the sides closed, you wanna keep it inside out and then measure two and a half inch square on each corner and draw a diagonal line through it. Square will be your sewing lines and the diagonal line will be your folding lines. So you fold the corners and sew across them and that's what makes the flat bottom. So then you do that for both the lining and the outside fabric. Also the great thing about quilting is you can just reuse fabrics. So all these fabrics I had previously used on a bunch of other projects, and one being a quilt I made like two years ago. And so now everything matches and it's great. And I can have a little, a little outfit. I took a significant chunk off each of the sides because I'm out it was way too big and it didn't really fit nicely into the lunch bag just put some batting and fabric together, made a tube, turned it right sides out, and then just added some stitching to make it look nice and stitched it onto the top. And then sewed the lining on, and then I added some nice bias tape around the edges to make it look nice and clean, even though I did a really bad job. Just don't look very close and it looks pretty. So then to attach it all, I put the outer layer into the lining with then the little flap shoved in and just sewed around the top, uh, making sure to leave an open spot to then flip it right side out. And then I hand sewed that little hole up. Then to finish it up, 
I did a nice top stitch around the rim, then it was basically done. The only problem was I needed to figure out some sort of closure. I originally wanted to do just a good old buttonhole with a big button, but then I was like, mm, maybe I should do Velcro with like a little fake button. And I tried the Velcro and I hated it and I took it off. And then I tried to do a buttonhole uh, and then realized my buttonhole holer <laughs> doesn't do that big of buttons. So then I scrapped that and then I sewed on a little elastic, little button with an elastic, but I didn't like the look of the one button and it didn't do a very good job of closing it. So then I ended up doing two buttons with two elastics and I like it very much. Yeah, it all worked out. the pencil case. It's pretty easy. You just put the outside fabric up over the zipper, the lining down, and then just sew around all of that, making sure to leave a little space to then flip it inside out later. And then you just do the same squares on each corner, fold it, sew it, you flip it inside out, sew up that little hole, and then you're done. So now I have the finished lunch kit. It was kind of bigger than I expected, but I kind of like it because I always have a problem of not being able to fit all my food in my lunch kit because I like to use only containers um, and containers take up a lot of space. So now I won't have that problem. And it's so cute and I love it so much. And it's literally like a pillow, which is great because I love taking naps on the bus and I never have a pillow. So now, I can just take my lunch kit and I have such a good pillow and it'll be so comfy um, and I love it so much. Eee. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's so much better than anything else I could have found anywhere. So I forgive it. <laughs> and yeah, and it's so matchy and so cute and I love it very much. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope that this was somewhat helpful for you, and see you later. And I think it was half a centimeter. I'm using two different measuring systems. Just Canada things. And then I just sewed. Di diagonal lines. <laughs>